According to the CDC, one in eight Americans report having taken an antidepressant in the last month. But what if the answer to curbing our reliance on antidepressants is using psychedelic drugs? Take a look. The latest trend coming back from the 60s isn't bell bottoms or blouses, but LSD. Users claim ingesting psychedelic drugs in tiny amounts called microdosing won't get you high, but instead boosts your creativity and overall mood. It first gained popularity among the tech set of Silicon Valley professionals, but now it's grabbing the attention of everyday people seeking alternative ways to boost their cognitive function. It's become so popular that there are how-to manuals, crowd-funded research groups, and even online microdosing courses. So could psychedelics be the new antidepressant, or is this illegal drug just giving users a temporary high? Wow. Joining us in the audience is neurologist Dr. Sarah Siavoshi, and on Skype, Paul Austin, the creator of The Third Wave, a site that educates users on how to microdose correctly. Also on Skype is author and mother of four, I yell at Waldman, who microdosed LSD for a month to help her depression and her marriage. So we're going to start with you, Dr. Sarah. What are people experiencing that's drawing them to LSD? People are saying that they feel um, that they're finding solutions to problems that they weren't finding solutions to before, that they're feeling that they're able to come out of a dark rut of a place where they're able to pull themselves out of depression and darkness, anxiety, maybe suicidality, and also being able to receive constructive criticism. But even though it's, it's microdosing, is it still addictive? So LSD, even at recreational doses, is not known to be an addictive drug. Okay. Um, it's not like cocaine, it's not like meth. There is some concern about maybe building tolerance to it, um, but not an addictive drug. And these doses that people are microdosing with, so just to put it into perspective, so 400 to 500 micrograms is this recreational dose. This is somewhere around 10 micrograms. If you even feel high a little bit, you're doing it in the wrong way. So the so end game, Dr. Ish, is not obviously euphoria, getting high, or hallucinations. That's not the end result, but here's my problem with it, right? Mm. Anything that makes you feel better has a chance to become addictive if it works. Mm. And so if a patient's coming to me and they've been depressed for 10 years, and I'm telling you, I'm gonna give you something this morning that's gonna have you feeling better tonight, they're gonna wanna use it over and over again. Yeah. So there may not be a chemical dependency, yeah. but you may develop some addictive behavior. When treating a patient, would you ever recommend this? Absolutely not right now. We need larger studies to really double-blinded, placebo-controlled studies that are able to tell us about the safety, the efficacy, and the long-term effects. And Ayala, we know that you tried it for 30 days. Well, I experienced a profound depression, a suicidal depression. I tried standard medications. I have a mood disorder, so this is something that was, um, the extent of this depression was unusual, but I had been depressed before. None of the medications that I was used to using worked, and I became more and more desperate, more and more suicidal, and when my suicidal ideation turned into actual planning, I needed to take serious action. So I was looking through my research materials. I saw the Jim Fadiman's book about psychedelic drugs, and I had been familiar with all of this wonderful research coming out from Johns Hopkins, NYU, UCLA, about the efficacy of psychedelic drugs and treating profound depression. So I thought I would give it a try. I took the microdose. I didn't experience any psychedelic effects at all. And I went to work, sat down at my computer, started writing. I'm a writer. and. Um, all of a sudden, I looked out the window and I was looking at my dogwood tree, which had burst into bloom. And it wasn't like the dogwood was, you know, taking flight. It was just that I looked at the tree and I thought, oh, the tree's so pretty. And I had been all but anhedonic for, I mean, really, like, I had been unable to experience beauty for about six months. My depression was so profound. And from that moment, it wasn't like the whole month was joy and flowers. It wasn't like I, you know, was constantly happy and bubbly. And But I was no longer profoundly depressed. And that was really remarkable. It was a remarkable result.